good afternoon everybody a warm and hello welcome from cxotv.news a flagship brand under techless media group i am anand sharma from techless media your host for today's event we have been running this webinar series titled marketing mondays for over a year now to provide a platform to marketers to learn from fellow marketing gurus we all have heard about the boardroom and that it governs the overall organization but greater role comes greater responsibility or accountability we are here to dissect the role of chief marketing officer in the oval room in case you want us to cover any other pointer or have a question please mention that in the q and a section or the chat panel we have an eminent panel today we have alok ranjan from ananta tech we have bhuna subramanian from brandstad india and we have zubin kutter from dr reddy's lab i request them to do a quick self introduction alok why don't we start with you hi good afternoon everyone uh, this is alok here i head chief marketing for ananta tech uh, we are a leading managed desktop as a service provider and headquartered in uh, mumbai uh, I take care of uh, 360 degree marketing functions and have led marketing and consulting engagement for global brands. Okay, thanks, Alok. Bona, in the order of uh, alphabets, do you want to go next? Sure, thanks, Anand. Uh, lovely to be here with all of you today, and I am Bona Subramanian. I am the chief marketing officer for Grandstead India. I have a total of about 25 years of experience across marketing pillars, which is product marketing and you know digital marketing and now I, I lead the, the marketing for that said india and uh, i take care of brand lead management performance marketing and uh, uh, you know the entire overall marketing initiatives for uh, brand said india nice to be here with you thank you bhuna thanks once and welcome once again zubin you want to uh, give your introduction please yeah uh, thank you anand for having me here and uh, good afternoon everybody uh, my name is zubin i head digital marketing and transformation for dr reddy's uh, dr reddy's is uh, one of the top pharmaceutical companies in the country today uh, my role over here is to uh, lay down the digital roadmap and the digital strategy for dr reddy's brands so that uh, you know these brands can have a digital footprint and have a digital presence and persona for themselves Uh, my past has been with i've spent almost two decades in the bfsi industry and then i've had a uh, i've had a stint with the tcs which is the largest uh, it firm in the country and the top 3 in the in the in the world today and uh, then i moved to dr reddy's and it's been great being uh, you know in the healthcare sector and this is the right time for uh, you know the healthcare sector to actually uh, leapfrog especially when it comes to digitization and looking at the overall digital initiatives so it's going to be a very exciting next 2 3 years for uh, a lot of us in the healthcare profession absolutely welcome once again zubin so friends Thank let's you. uh without taking much time i wish to you know quickly turn to our panelist discuss the core issue that we we are here for but i must add when it is so important these days to account for every penny being spent whether it's marketing or anything else so is the importance of ensuring that the corporate brand is upheld in this time of crisis well let's learn what our panelists have to recommend today the views expressed by the speakers are their own and they may not represent the viewpoint of the organizations they work with let me start with alok Ah, look. How do you see the role of CMO, which, it, if it has evolved in the recent time? So let me uh, start by thanking you, Anand, and Techless Media for extending an invitation for me for being part of the Marketing Monday uh, webinars. Uh, I am glad to join this session today with other marketing leaders, and good, looking forward to sharing my thoughts uh, in the questions and uh, learning something new from our discussions. uh coming back to the question that you have put together uh, for me uh so i would see this uh, from uh, marketing as a whole as such 
marketing according to me is uh, the nerve center in most organizations uh, and why i say that because uh, we are always at the center stage driving key initiatives and interaction uh, while interacting with uh, the entire organization and i see uh, the evolution of a cmo from being a creative thinker working on designs advertisements brandings enablement etc to becoming more uh, of a data oriented professional right now who thinks analytically provides intelligence uh, which are insightful for the organization and most of these intelligence are uh, customer centric and are expected to drive uh, revenue streams for the organization if i compare this to any b2c organization because i primarily come from a b2b organization uh, marketing is most early uh, seen as a growth function most b2c organization while in a b2b organization it is uh, commonly perceived as perceived as a sales support organization thankfully that is changing now uh, in this evolution and uh, marketing heads are expected to engage in customer engagements with sales uh, and share insights that can help shape uh, the business decisions uh, from my experience of uh, working across a uh, different organization i would say marketing has played a profound role in uh, driving various strategic decision making like if i talk about uh, my organization ananta so last year itself we launched our own uh, cloud desktop so i mean before i uh, talk for let me just give a gist of what exactly is cloud desktop so it involves uh, hosting your desktops on any public cloud using vdi technology which is virtual desktop infrastructure technology uh, which can be securely accessed by the user from any remote location especially uh, i would say last year ever since we had this uh, lockdown and the pandemic started uh, we have seen a tremendous uptake in uh, the cloud de desktop business because uh, with most of the organization or uh, working from home they needed a technology and we were there with that uh, right technology at the right time to uh, provide that kind of solution so marketing played a significant role uh, in not only driving customer uh, conversations at this particular time but also in uh, understanding the pulse of of the uh, industry the need the, the need of the customers and uh, we we did uh, or launch one of the products uh, in the us market uh, which has contributed and uh, how marketing actually has helped here is uh, not only successfully launching and being involved in promotions but uh, gathering strategic marketing insights by gathering competitive information performing market research that helped in uh, designing and of of this product uh, as such and also had to cut down the time to market uh, for the product so i would say more than achieving and sharing intelligence from various tactical marketing activities a cmo is now expected to add business value and that is what uh, the role of the cmo has evolved in recent times and thanks for sharing this uh, uh bhuvna moving on to my next question how you see the cmo role pivoting to meet newer challenges absolutely i i think that's one function which is automatically pivoted to take on the new challenges as well and uh, if you just take a look at some of the challenges that alok has also touched upon right the change in the consumer behavior uh, so i met the md of tupperware uh, you know in another panel and uh, they were a 100% offline business as of last year uh they had to completely revamp and you know go into an online uh, model overnight they had to reskill their people the women were selling their products offline and then you know they actually did a complete web page and all of that and went into an e-commerce model overnight last year so that's one of the key things that the business is changing into and the cmos are also adapting to that change uh, in fact in our own case in randstad the recruitment uh, you know went 100% offline uh, you know from 100% offline to 100% online model last year and that's what we've been uh, looking at and constant uh, you know investment in technology along with the business that's something that the cmo is also looking into because it it comes into the uh, you know purview of the cmo to ensure there is a 
proper customer experience that is being taken care of that is one challenge the second one is obviously you know digital transformation which has become the word uh, you know every day in every organization that's something that the cmos uh, quickly worn uh, the hat on and uh, but i always believe that it's not just the job of the cmo or the marketing function to go digital it's uh, the entire organization but the cmo has the key responsibility of you know creating that guide creating that playbook for the organization as far as digital transformation is concerned and uh, and i think alok you touched upon the data drivenness that has uh, come in of course data has always been there but how do you drive insights out of that and how do you really understand the insight and translate that to business opportunities for uh, you know the organization that has come on uh, you know into the cmo's purview as well uh, the third thing that i've noticed is that you know how do you accelerate with agile again these were all very uh, you know theoretical words that were being used by organizations until about 2019 i would say and now it's become a part and parcel of every organization and i feel that uh, you know how how does the cmo you know be always ready for this change and uh, keep the uh, you know conversation moving with the consumers and be very agile in creating that culture within the organization as well and it's a job of the uh, anand had mentioned that about the brand also it's just a job of the cmo uh, to keep the brand alive through any situation or any pandemic or any crisis as well and uh, it's about creating a share of voice and uh, making the brand relevant Uh, right to the consumers in these situations and uh, typically what used to happen uh, anand is the first budget cut would happen in marketing but that has changed i would say in the last year i mean a uh, lot of brands have ensured that uh, you know the investment is on and at least there is a minimum investment to ensure that the brand is kept live and uh, that's a smart and those organizations are the ones that have thrived through the pandemic as well and that's the job of the cmo to you know kind of sell that within the organization to keep that investment ongoing and uh, for us in transcend i would say we live through our values and that's something that we have kept live in the you know uh, within the organization and externally as well and uh, so whatever the circumstances our core values is what that we take to the market and that's definitely the job of the cmo to ensure that you know on the marketing function to create that trust and you know serve the customer at any given point in time and uh, in transfer it is about for me you know it's about bridging the gap it's about bridging getting the person a job which changes the person's life it's not just a job but a career it's a family which is being taken care of and that's the promise we make as an organization and uh, so the cmo's role here becomes you know to lead the organization through its values also right? and uh, last but not the least i would say the technology uh, driven transformation which was already happening but it's reached a speed uh, which no one would have imagined and uh, at the same time people are also earning for a return to normal human interaction which is physical digital whatever you call it in the real world experiences so how can a marketing function led by the cmo Uh, be ready for uncertainties which can change from completely digital to a hybrid model tomorrow right and how can you ensure that your team and the organization is comfortable with the uncomfortable circumstances so no i i was i was able to make out what you said till the till the last sentence and uh, it all made uh, you know very valid points because uh, yes uh, cmo is the custodian of the brand as well okay uh, Zubin, what would you like to add? Uh, Pharma industry has been the busiest one during the last one year or so. Uh, so, uh, what what sort of uh, evolution uh, have you witnessed, and what's your plan for for the future uh, from CMO's perspective? So, I don't I don't think anybody has a playbook for this pandemic. Okay, um, the playbook is changing probably almost every day. Uh, you know so nobody has a set playbook in the sense that nobody or no cmo can tell you that you know here is what i'm going to do in the next 3 months and this is the budget that i need and this is the output or this is the roi that i'm going to get you know in the next 3 months for this kind of a budget so it's a very dynamic place here so like i said nobody has a playbook everybody is going through you know the 
what is happening on a daily basis and on the ground as to in terms of what is happening but what is interesting is that uh, the pharma industry which had not adopted to digital compared to the other industries like retail banking has suddenly realized that they are in a major corner in the sense that at one end there are manufacturing companies like the pharma companies who are traditional manufacturer of drugs and on the other hand there are these new age technology companies that are actually taking a lot of mind space of the consumer they are taking a lot of share you know in terms of driving technology uh, you know to get more people engaged in this entire healthcare um, an ecosystem so players like practo have gained tremendous uh, you know tremendous clout in terms of or a lot of mind share in terms of doctor consultations which are online which never happened right if you look at two years back why would you want to go online and consult a doctor when you can walk into his clinic and consult a doctor and do it face to face but but those dynamics have changed uh, consumers have changed their habits have changed and you know the doctor who was the most digitally unsavvy uh, person on this planet has changed so you know uh, the last one month has made a lot of people change their habits uh, including the consumer including the doctor the doctor was the last person to actually check his emails or you know to actually go on social media but that's not the case now if he has to continue his business he needs to learn what is digital and how digital can help him you know how an online consultancy or an online consulting uh, practice can actually help him so the whole game has changed and uh, players who have led from the front or you know cmos who have led from the front have been very very focused on driving digitization driving digital adoption across the ecosystem while there have been you know players like one mg who've uh, come in and changed the 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 buying selling of medicines made it totally online uh, you know so there have been drastic uh, changes there has been a lot of evolution with new players coming in the healthcare space or the health tech is kind of become like fintech what fintech was about you know 3 years back uh, you know where used to have you know online players getting into or eating a lot of these uh, traditional banks uh, uh, the or you know uh, i would say the position that the traditional banks had were you know were being you know in some form or the other being eaten by these fintechs and that's the same thing that's happening uh, you know in the healthcare industry with a lot of uh, see there is also a lot of money that's flowing in from one side in terms of people wanting to fund these ventures tata has picked up a big stake in you know these e pharmacies with one mg they picked up a big stake there are other players or other p firms that are picking up a, picking up stakes in a, in a lot of these uh, online fintech player uh, a lot of these online health tech players so uh, in the last one year this this sector has seen a lot of uh, shake uh, you know a lot of a uh, lot of movement a lot of um a lot of uh, disruption but it's all for the good it has made you know traditional legacy businesses like the pharma businesses look up and take notice so today if you are a cmo of a pharma business you are uh, you know you are you are on the hot seat in terms of ensuring that you put in uh, digital platforms put in the digital channels to ensure that you know your business is leapfrogged from what it is today very valid points uh, zubin uh alok moving on to you uh when we talk about the boardroom and cmo participation what are your thoughts on that so i'll begin from uh bhuvana's point on digital transformation so i would say uh right now digital transformation is actually it's, it's accelerating at a greater speed and especially for a cloud-based solution provider like us uh and uh, it becomes all the more important uh, that as uh, marketing uh, leads, we connect with the enterprises and make them un realize or and help them adopt the right technology that can enable them to work from anywhere. 
Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have internal stakeholders or employees uh, whose safety is uh, extremely important and the organization constantly uh, is working towards ensuring that all the employees are safe. This puts us as marketers at a position where we work very closely with the senior leadership and the CEO in the, of the organization to ensure uh, proper communication and messaging uh, is disseminated both to internal stakeholders as well as to the outside world. Uh, in, uh, and uh, also, I also see that there is no other function than marketing that really understands the digital footprints of their customer especially uh, from the external uh, market perspective. So we keep analyzing customer data across all channels to optimize initiatives uh, tied to organization business objectives. Some of these outcomes can provide uh, new business dimension uh, to the strategic plan uh, for the organization. And that primarily, I would say, uh, is one among uh, the ideas that we, uh, or the activities that we, initiated uh, within our organization uh, in the, during the launch of our uh, new product last year for the small and medium uh, businesses in the US. Uh, I also uh, see that CMO's participation in the boardroom can uh, play a big role in educating uh, senior leadership about uh, customers uh, and that can play a long term in organization's growth story. Uh, I would like to cite one example here from one of my earlier roles, uh, wherein uh, marketing emerged as a driver of customer engagement. And what we did was uh, we worked with the analyst community to come up with an industry framework for the telecom industry. And that was, and this entire framework uh, work was fully owned by marketing so we conceptualized it together with the analyst community uh, we worked on putting together the framework and uh, put it in the format of a report that became an instant hit or i would say the go-to report for the organization uh, when it came to connecting with uh, the customers uh, and uh, this helped marketing to position itself uh, to the internal stakeholders and uh, laying claim uh, for uh, the CMO participation in the boardroom. Uh, another challenge uh, that I would say uh, that, that needs to be addressed uh, for CMO participation is there are a lot of interdepartmental silos that uh, exist in most organizations. And as customer-centric organization, uh, within, within our present uh, organization, I would say we have already initiated steps to remove that silo and design an integrated approach to market that can help uh, establish better customer connect and personalize uh, messaging uh, and communication as per customer needs. Uh, so uh, that put together, uh, I would say is uh, very important from a CMO uh, perspective. Uh, to provide insightful information uh, to the senior management uh, so that uh, the right business decisions can be uh, taken uh, for the longer uh, term growth story of the organization. Thank you, Alok. Thank you. That was quite interesting. You know, how uh, CMOs can do the uh, value add. And uh, thanks for uh, bringing a relevant example into this. Kona works your take. Do you see CMO seat in the boardroom? or it is eluding or it's not acquired. What's your take on this? It's clearly not a yes or no answer, uh, Anand, right? It is, uh, you know, it depends, of course, on the size of the organization, the bent, the, you know, how the uh, board is, board's mind is bent. But I would say, first of all, as CMO, if you believe uh, that the function is, uh, you know, something that needs to be and needs a seat at the boardroom, ask for it. Right, many CMOs don't have that conversation with the board or with the CEO. That's where we need to start changing this whole dynamic of even asking the question of whether it needs to be there or not need not need to be there. Right. So I think that's the beginning. Of it. Right. Then I also, you know, if you really see what do they really need to do to be in the boardroom, right? You need to understand what the board is there for. It's not like you're there as a role and then you just automatically get a seat. It's not something that you need to earn the seat as well. 
that's there and so you need to be part of the organization's growth story for sure right if the cmo role is not been created to be part of the growth story then obviously you're not looked at as, as someone who needs to be at the seat so it uh, and i've always i mean my team knows this very well i always say the marketing function needs to be a you know a revenue function and not a cost one alone right you can't just keep spending money and expect people to you know respect you only for spending money like you need to bring back the revenue as well uh that's something and 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 i think alok is alok uh, and zubin have uh, stressed upon this uh, enough is there so much data out there and, and the consumer behavior is actually in your the insights lie with the marketing function and that's something that you add value to the board as well right and that's what the board is looking for they're looking for that business impact that uh, that person at the seat or the function at the seat can bring to the table and i think if marketing is making an impact to the brand and it's important to show that by not focusing on that how detrimental it can be uh, you know uh, to the organization as well the other thing that i've noticed is that marketing uh, tendency is to throw jargon right so don't do that right make, make it simplified for the board to understand uh, what you're really doing as a you know in the marketing function and you can show how each campaign that you run or you know initiatives you're doing from the marketing function is actually you know is relevant and is impacting the business at the end of the day that's one thing and uh, driving if you if you focus on the consumer behavior and creating customer delight through your campaigns i think that automatically translates to business and that's something that the business and the board you know appreciate uh sometimes cmos don't see customer delight as part of their job they think it's the you know fields job or somebody who's at the end and who's actually talking to the client that's the, that's the job of that person it's not you need to be able to do that uh another key thing that i've noticed is that uh marketing uh you know or the cmos don't speak numbers right they're talking brand they're talking campaigns they're talking digital transformation and my uh, take on this is if you don't understand the business aspects of it or the finances then you shouldn't be you know you shouldn't expect to be at the table that you should be able to speak the business language and you should be able to have that conversation with the rest of the c suite as well right and you can't just speak brand and get away with it you should be able to speak leads you should be able to speak revenue uh, you should be able to uh, speak business requirements and take part in the rest of the pillars of the organization as well not just marketing you know not not just focus only on the marketing part of it i mean i would proudly say that i do have a seat at the table and i would also credit the you know the ceo uh, cfo and the cpo for this they have they trust marketing uh, and they trust that marketing brings value to the table and there is a respect to the function and that's your job as a cmo to ensure that you are seen as that important essential function and you deserve that seat at the table and you know it must sit at the heart of the business business decision making as well if and i would flip it the other way and say the business also needs to kind of see it at that way and needs to invest in this function and you know if you're really looking at embracing a higher uh, expectation out of the outcomes that marketing drives then i would say trust the marketing function allow them to be part of the business decision making they they do generally come with Uh, brilliant and differentiating ideas so i would say uh, yeah, uh, largely yes uh, i do see cmos to be part of that uh, business discussion and the seat at the table but you need to earn it the right way and you need to be able to have those relevant conversations that's my take yes i am absolutely with you that uh, it has to be earned uh, by showing the value add that you bring to the table uh very valid points abuna uh, uh, zubin uh, given a seat in the boardroom what difference a cmo would be able to make or would it would he be at a disadvantage yes position what's your take on that so let's look at some of the let's look at some of these industry some of these companies that have been leaders in their own industry and you know has marketing actually driven uh, you know their leadership or is it something else so if you look at apple you know or if you look at even coca cola or if you look at you know some of these mnc companies like nike it's a clear it's a clear uh, 
you know there is there is a clear charter there that marketing has driven you know a lot of outcomes on that brand in terms of not only customer experience not only customer perception but also been a growth leader in terms of you know driving new markets and doing new technological related advances to drive the brands now it's clearly a top down approach and uh, you know every ceo probably has a different take on marketing but ceos that have seen uh, you know that have seen marketing as uh, not just a support function but as a growth or growth function as a growth uh, outcome or an outcome based role or a performance based role have always had uh, you know marketers by their side they've given uh, enough uh you know they've given a lot of uh, they, rather they've given a lot of weightage to what the marketers have said they've given them enough freedom to do lots of activities that have driven the brand uh, not only from a, a perception or an awareness perspective but also from a sales perspective and uh, a lot of ceos have also done or also given a lot of investments now if you see in the last 2 3 years marketers ro- a cmo's role has changed you know he is become more of a chief digital officer that he's wearing that hat he's also become a semi cfo because you know he has to take decisions on you know the budgets that are required for a marketing technology kind of platforms that are there so his role has drastically changed he's wearing a lot of hats today not just the hat of just being a support function to a sales and uh, you know the leader or the ceo who actually looks at uh, his function uh, in a more elaborate or a more uh, profound manner is going to have him definitely on you know next to him uh, at the boardroom okay sure thanks zubin uh, look let me just uh, uh move to a different topic uh recently we heard uh, i'll i'll refer the uh, source uh, why the attrition rate of cmo is highest among all the states so why the huge chunk yeah so uh come to this uh, anand so i would say uh, this is a little tricky question and yes i mean uh, there have been a lot of research done on this and it has i also i mean came across some numbers to around 4 4.2 years or something uh, but yeah that setting that aside uh, i would try and attempt to this uh, answer this by citing three uh, key challenges uh, that we uh, face as marketers probably uh, that could be one of the re- or a few of the reasons that's that's driving this uh, attrition rate uh first is uh, marketing as a function uh, requires a broader approach to achieving business objectives so what i mean is there's no one activity that can provide or that can lead to a desired business outcome which is completely aligned to an organization's uh, business objectives so as marketers it creates a dilemma for us uh when it comes to justifying business outcome uh, to an activity so it 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 is a kind of uh, situation where it it becomes really difficult to uh, say define an roi uh, for each activity that's uh, being conducted uh, another challenge that i see here is uh, purely from a uh, financial evaluation of uh, every marketing spend that's that's done in organization and as said it is uh, the chain of com- complementary activities that leads to desired uh, business outcome so uh, and uh, when it comes to marketing spend it be- really becomes uh, difficult sometimes to uh, justify every marketing dollar that is spent on any particular initiative and uh, not getting a business a desired business outcome out of that uh, is, is is always a challenge so that's the second point on that and the third uh, one i would say is uh, we are now dealing with an audience that is mostly digital and uh, especially in the, i would say past one and a half years uh, with the pandemic uh, still uh, 
uh, MA does. Uh, so, and, and it, it's going to remain so at least for next uh, few more years. It is very difficult and Jubin also mentioned that it is uh, really difficult to uh, predict the long term business impact arising out of these initiatives which targets the audience and uh, as as I would say in fact uh, both Zubin and uh, Bhuvana mentioned about it uh, that we deal with understanding audience behavior their attitude and responses. So this is something which is a very unpredictable and it, it purely changes with the need and time. So as marketers, we continuously strive to optimize the campaigns. We try to make changes uh, and that that's an ongoing activity. So most and on top of that, uh, most digital activities leverage tools and platforms that are highly algorithm based and uh, and has and have a very broad segment when it comes to targeting the audience. So this makes all the more difficult for us to predict the outcome because uh, of the changing nature of uh, both the customer's uh, behavior as well as uh, the tools that we use to connect with the customers. But having said that, uh, we must understand uh, that most organizations now look at marketing uh, as a driver of change. And it is becoming all the more important for uh, us to align to business objectives, uh, focusing on enabling new revenue streams, uh, acting as a bridge between the organization and external stakeholders, and uh, most importantly, uh, leading business discussions uh, from the front uh, through proper messaging, uh, by analyzing the data that's available to us, and uh, reaching out to the customers in time uh, so that their business needs are served. So I would say uh, given these three reasons and, and the importance that marketing has as a role uh, at this point in time, especially uh, during the pandemic, we, we have seen the need uh, of marketing to emerge as I would say uh, as, as an organization itself uh, because uh, it did drove end-to-end uh, -end communication both with internal as well as external organization at a breakneck speed because things started uh, changing in the market and everyone expected marketing to uh, reach out to the customers, reach out to internal employees and all of that happened uh, really at a, at a quick speed. And all of us, uh, I'm sure we, we worked uh, burning midnight oils uh, almost in a 24-7 mode to uh, accomplish some of these activities uh, that we intend to do for the organization. Uh, given that, uh, I, I see uh, marketing uh, would definitely play a bigger role in the next uh, few years, uh, especially in most organizations, because especially because customers are going digital and uh, marketing is one uh, department or one function within an organization that really understands uh, digital well and the customer digital footprint. So that, that's my uh, take on this, Anand. Sure. Sure. Bhuna, if you may want to answer this question uh, as to why the attrition of CMO is highest among all the CXOs, uh, it would be great. But then I have one more question for you. How the board needs to be prepared to assimilate us an, an incoming CMO. So over to you, Bona. Yeah, sure. And some I kind of I know data speaks like our hooks at the data, there is one part of it. But if you see generally, you know, I uh, don't see many marketing uh, you know people moving organizations so often, especially in the senior role. So I don't know which part of the uh, data is talking about only I mean I don't know if it's relevant to India or if it's like a global number right because I know and in my own circle or in my own friend circle and the CMO circles that I'm part of I don't see too much movement so I'm not very sure about the data also I think that's my take on that attrition uh, part and wherever the you know I think Alok also mentioned that wherever the uh, the organization has provided value to that role I don't see uh, the CMOs moving uh, too much, but if you really look at costs that could cause, you know, can bring it bring, bring about attrition as if there is a limited role for the CMO in that organization. If there is no lateral expansion or there is no 
um, business insight provided uh, by the CMO, there's no value add that the CMO is providing, then it can get very mundane over a period of time if you're just sticking only to what you do like for years and years and you know because that's the limit that you reach in any organization as far as marketing function is concerned so if you really looking at growth then you need to also prepare yourself as a person to you know expand your role grow your team grow into you know different regions grow into business units so that's where i think the cmo's role uh, the, the cmo could craft a role and uh, you know expand their role uh, to be you know make themselves relevant and therefore you know not necessarily move out of an organization of course it if the other way around as well the organization also has to provide that uh, autonomy of sorts for the cmo to be able to do that then i think that can be definitely addressed uh, that's the answer to the part one question the part two i think uh, is on how do boards prepare i think it is about uh, preparing how would they prepare for any other role one is uh, i think we've discussed this enough in terms of providing or recognizing that uh, what marketing or the cmo brings to the table itself right that you know uh, recognizing that uh, they bring value to the leadership conversations and uh, through their intimate understanding of market customers you know business opportunities uh, what does the board generally look at right they're looking at business impact uh, they're looking at uh, creating that culture. They're looking at accountability and then ensuring that the stakeholders and investors are taken care of. This is the role of the board. I mean, I'm just giving a 30,000 feet uh, perspective to what they do. And that's what they need to do uh, when it comes to assimilating the CMO as well. How can the CMO be prepared to do that? So how can the CMO position the company to its greatest advantage in the form to the overall uh, you know vision and strategy of the organization how can they uh, promote the services uh, you know or generate more than i am getting quite a lot of feedback that's i think that's one way of preparing uh, you know the board can prepare and uh, also about you know the good cmos i would say are instrumental in injecting this transformation it's digital is today right tomorrow it can be anything it can be ai it can be you know whole stack of technology that comes your way and how do you really lead the transformation that's one key thing and uh, but in my organization very interestingly i would say uh, you know uh, when I, before i joined the ceo had taken on the interim role of the cmo so he had a complete under the understanding of what that role entails because it's also happened uh, over a period of time and that is something that i recommend uh, that every uh, c-suite in the organizations either be part of the marketing meetings to understand that they're not just doing brand work or they're not building decks or they're not handling only events but they go beyond that and the role is much much uh, bigger than what it is in this uh, that is one and then uh, you know it also allows i think the CEO plays a major role here, right, in ensuring that the CMO's profile and uh, um, is communicated, and the heightened importance of marketing to the rest of the business is also done. And uh, I, and last but not the least, Anand, this is something that I've been telling is I think the onus lies on the CMO also, right, to to educate themselves about the business, to be able to create that impact and have that understanding and how they can create that difference uh, or bring about that difference for the organization and i think uh, only by partnering uh, with the business or with the board uh, will the cmo's profile be elevated uh, in today's time and in the future as well thank you very valid points Purna, and uh, thank you for that it was uh, quite insightful uh, zubin moving on to you what interventions uh, the CEO needs to make, though Bhuvanarit, you know, touch upon a few of the points. Uh, the CEO needs to make to ensure that the marketing space is delivering its optimum value. So what are your thoughts on that? So I just have one one point to make here. I think, uh, you know, this the CEO needs to change his mindset. You know, he needs to really change his mindset, and he needs to ensure uh, he needs to change his mindset. Uh, to such an extent and he should have a lot of faith in 
uh, his CMO and the entire marketing department to actually not uh, to to look at take him to another uh, trajectory level you know of the company and that's a mindset that he needs to change and he needs to have you know faith on his CMO to look at it so like we've discussed in the last you know 45 minutes that the entire dynamics and the role of the CMO is drastically changing uh, you know he is not only a support function now who knows more about who 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 knows more about the customer and the engagement part he's also uh, he's also you know somebody who the organization looks at you know to transform uh, you know the organization digitally and take it to another level he's also somebody that the organization looks at to you know check in terms of in in terms of data how how can he sniff through the data and call out those insights or you know call out those different growth markets uh, you know and then move this the entire industry to another trajectory so the ceo needs to change his mindset have a lot of faith on a cmo and you know his team to deliver but most of it so if you look at the journey of a ceo a lot of companies have uh, given the ceo either either the cfo becomes the ceo in a lot of companies or is the sales uh, you know it's a very strong sales company or a sales industry where the head of sales over a period of time has become the ceo now that is where the cmo has actually lost out in terms of having you know that kind of clout with uh, you know his peers and that is what you know we as cmos or you know cmos need to fight uh, you know that that kind of battle to ensure that you know that clout is given back and Bhuvna rightly pointed out saying that you know you need to earn that kind of a seat there and show uh, impact and outcome of what you've been doing so uh, you know that that's my take on this no absolutely with you uh, thank you so much alok any um, we are just wrapping up so any closure remarks that you uh, like to give to the audience yeah, so I mean, uh, just to add to a uh, pointer that Jubin uh, brought now uh, on when the CEO should change it, uh, his mindset, I think that's, that's a very valid point uh, to, the, to uh, mention here because uh, it, it's not only, uh, I would say, uh, the CEO, but the entire uh, senior leadership should uh, look at marketing as a, a more of a business driver change. Plus, there has to be a uh, sink in the thoughts because unless a CMO gets the support of the CEO, it, it's very difficult for the CMO to uh, prove uh, what the CMO is trying to do within the organization. So, so having said that, uh, it, it's, it's important that uh, both the CEO and the CMO work on the same level. And then I think the more work needs to be done uh, at the CMO side, uh, trying to... Uh, match the thoughts of the CEO because obviously uh, he is coming from more uh, from a business and strategic vision uh, perspective. So it's it's all on the CMO's uh, mindset to try and understand what exactly is being uh, put in front of him and uh, try and uh, accelerate his pace and then get to uh, work, work together with the CEO to take the organization to the next level. So yeah, I think uh, that that would be my closing point uh, on, on this. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much. Una, anything from your end? Sure, Anand. Uh, I think it's great time to be in marketing uh, with pandemic or the future, right? I think there's lots to, lots for the marketing function. And it's a great time for the CMO. You're in that cusp of a point where you're looking to so much of transformation happening and you are actually driving it, uh, you know, as a leader of marketing. And I'm very proud to to be a CMO of an organization like that, that at this point in time. I would only say that, you know, equip yourself right, and educate the organization and enable your team uh, to do the right thing in these times. And I think you're good to go. Thank you so much, Guna. Zubin, last but certainly not the least, any closure remarks from your end? So what this uh, last year has shown, and I guess, like uh, there is no playbook here um, and uh, you know we don't know 
uh, the the this environment is pretty uncertain in terms of what's been happening but the cmo has been there hasn't been a lot of focus on the cmo role and his position and what he's been doing that in the last couple of years that has been in the last one year you know especially because he's looked upon by the organization as somebody who's going to transform uh, transform the organization and give it that throughput in terms of the digital transformation leapfrogging for an organization and i think that's the advantage that uh, we as marketers have today uh, considering the pandemic situation that's there and considering the entire ecosystem i think we should latch on to the opportunity here and you know show the organization as to what cmos can do i was busy taking my notes because it was a very interesting discussion thank you so much uh, uh, zubin bhavna and uh, uh, alok alok uh, mentioned about marketing as a nerve center and uh, bhavna did mention about cmo being the brand custodian and people engagement with changing business needs of customers as there are new business cases of digital adoption zubin mentioned about cmo needs to be part of the growth function and test to be revenue function as opposed to a cost function bona i remember you had brought another important point that the seat has to be earned by the value add but the company executive needs to see the marketing function as a change maker and needs to be given that much freedom and space recognizing that marketing has a good reach and touch with the customer well zubin i'm certainly with you there is no playbook or there is no standard playbook so one has to improvise while on the move change the tires while the car is still running well i'm confident that all of you must have enjoyed this enriching session as much as i did you are already on top of the r moreover it is always beneficial to hear from the leaders directly you can watch the past webinars on www.cxctv.news i thank each one of you for taking out time and attending this event and wish you all the success during this challenging time with this we call it a day thank you alok bhavna zubin once again and thanks everybody for your esteemed presence and wish you a great week ahead thank you so much For more updates from CXO TV please like and subscribe to our channel